Hello everybody, this is Ali Reza. Welcome to another tutorial of my YouTube channel, Kian.SmartHome. Setting up ESB Home add-on on Home Assistant, you will have a YAML file as you named note while setting it up. By clicking on the add-on, which you can do it by navigating to Supervisor, the add-on page opens. Then in this page, I click Open Web UI. Here in this page, you will see list of created nodes. By clicking on edit of each node, its YAM file will open. So we can add lines to it, or it's better to say that we can edit it. Editing YAM files, you can create switches and control outputs with these switches. But how to add switches? The GPIO switch platform allows you to use a specific pin on your node and your development board as a switch then as an example you can hook up a relay to the gpio pin and use it through this platform to control a light pins are very important as you must use proper ones why because not all pins or let's say gpios are suitable for any use having esp 8266 development boards the best pins to use as outputs are 4 5 12 13 and 14. One important thing to notice about ESP8266 is that the GPIO numbers do not match the labels on the board. Having ESP32 development boards, the best pins to use as outputs are 19 pins, as you see the numbers on a screen. So you can use these pins as switches without any caches or interruption. Okay, to use pins of ESP development boards, we must add a specific lines to the YAM file. Let's add lines to define switches. On the file below the captive portal, at the beginning of a line, I enter switch. The switch domain includes all platforms that should show up like a switch and can only be turned on or off all pins that you want to use as switch must be added below this line the switch must be at the beginning of the line in the next line first i enter a dash then platform Platform must be specified as GPIO. The next line is name. You should set a name for your switch. Do not forget to put the name in quotation. The next line is related to defining pins. As I mentioned earlier, pins are very important as you must use proper ones. This file is related to my Node MCU development board. I use pin number four. You have to enter the lines exactly as I entered. You can copy and paste an example in description. If Codes are not entered correctly, the install button will be disabled. The next line can be ID. ID is optional and in another video I will talk about it. Just know that IDs are used to connect components from different domains. The next line is also optional. It is restore underline mode. Defines how the GPIO switch acts upon boot. Using this option, the state is saved in flash memory. Be aware that the flash has a limited number of write cycles, around 100,000. So after that, the flash section will fail. Therefore, do not use this option when you have components that update rapidly. By default, it is set to off. You can set it to on.
you can find out more about the values this option can have in description inverted can be the next line by default it is false if you set it to true while the switch is off the output is high and while the switch is on the output is low these are the basic lines to add switches i already have written lines to use outputs of my node mcu as switches i paste them as i said at the beginning of the video the best gpios or let's say pins of esp8266 to use as outputs are gpio 4 5 12 13 and 14 so this is the basic lines to add to the yamd file to create switches to control pins as output be careful that all the lines are below the switch after editing the yamd file you have to click save then click on in a stop to upload the edited yamd file to the board the board is connected to home assistant wirelessly so i select wirelessly uploading file begins wait till it completes when you reach to these lines uploading is successful as you can see here there is a description of what we have done i click on stop to explain more with details i use my esp32 development board click on edit then paste the lines that I have pre-written the domain is switch the platform in all switches is GPIO as you can see do not forget to put the dash before the platform the best pins or let's say GPIOs on ESP32 to use as outputs are 2, 4, 5, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, 25, 26, 27, 32 and 33. After entering pin Switch 1 is a normal switch, as you can see. Defining switch 2, I add an ID with the name of relay. Defining switch 3, I define restore mode to default on. So, after booting up the board, switch 3 is turned on. Defining switch 4, I inverted it by setting inverted to true, which means while the switch is off, the output is high, and while the switch is on, the output is low. You can add icons to the switches. Here is an example. Later in another video, we'll talk about using icons. The format of entering icon must be like this in quotation begins with MDI colon and the name of the icon. We can have momentary switches. To create momentary switches, for example, switches that toggle a pin for a moment, you can use on underline turn underline on trigger. This is on underline turn underline on then column this is an automation to perform when the light is turned on then we define a delay time which must be in 
milliseconds. After that, the action must be defined, which is switch dot turn underline off. You can find the lines in description. After editing this YAMP file, I click on save, then click on install to upload the edited file to the board. Select wirelessly, uploading begins. Wait till it completes. When we get to these lines, installation is completed. And here you can see the list of switches. I click on stop. I click on configuration, select integration. ESP home integration uh, must be automatically added to your home assistant. I have two development boards. They are here. I can select each of them. As you see, I selected ESP32. It has one device and 19 entities. I click on the device, select it. Here are the list of entities. This is the icon I used in Switch 6. Let's select Node MCU. It has one device and six entities. These are the entities. That's it. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to leave comments if you have any question. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done already. By buying me a coffee, you can support me to upload more videos. I will see you in the next video.